Okay, so I'm Ian Forrester. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Herb just talked about, but also a little bit more about a project that I'm working on. So, I know you're all thinking, someone from the BBC telling us all this stuff about the BBC. Um, I'm, I'm, even though I work for the BBC, I've been, I worked for the BBC for 18 years. I can't believe it myself, to be honest. Um, I am not very BBC, and I want to share something with you. I feel like I've only shared this once before, and that is, I was not a fan of the BBC. I really was not. Um, I know this would be live streams, so my colleagues would be like, oh, did you have to tell that story? But for me, the BBC was very much about this kind of stuff, and it just had no reflection on my life. I just didn't understand like, why anyone would want to watch it, listen to it. I just didn't understand. It wasn't until oh, I actually read this book. Um, I'm not trying to endorse this book. I'm not selling this book. And I'll be outside with the book. Um, but I read this book. And also, I heard a lot about uh, the Greg Dyke era, um, about kind of the BBC and you know, kind of cutting, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to swear, um, cutting all the, well, the B. Um, from a lot of the stuff that the BBC was well known for. And I, thought, I just felt like there was so much happening there that it was a really good time. You know, they were like ready for me, almost. And I, and I know it sounds kind of big-headed, but I really do think that if I had joined before, it would have been very different. I probably would have gone in, gone back out, you know, where this seemed like a really the right time to do this. Because what I realized through reading the book, is that this is about public service. And I'm a massive advocate of public service. Um, if you talk to me afterwards, I can tell you, I, can just, I just could sing the praises. I know it's not perfect all the time, but there are, especially because I work with a lot of European um, public service organizations, um, there are some amazing stuff that comes with public service. And I think it's well worth considering, you know, for your journey forward or for um, maybe for collaboration, as you'll see. So I ended up in R&D. Um, most people don't even know there is an R&D department. Actually, hands up if you know that there's BBC R&D. OK, it's about half. I can just about see you all. Yeah, we're famous for stuff like Freeview HD, DAB, My Camp Stereo, but I'm not interested in that stuff as a broadcast. Um, we also had a hand in stuff like the BBC Micro um, and the Micro Bit and stuff like that. Actually, I know the person who said on the, on the slide just there. There's the the the, the, the original Micro Bit made from a breadboard, and that person still works for R&D, and I'm still impressed whenever I, I see it. But there are new pastors, and I think you know moving to London and experience in London, all that kind of stuff was great, but I always wanted to see the BBC as a more of a distributed um, you know, kind of um, company. And I, I just felt like London kind of just had this feel about it, this kind of very BBC, the stuff that you imagine, dare I say, W1A kind of style to it. And I just didn't like it. And when the opportunity came about to move to Manchester, uh, I'll be honest, I think you'll see just there, it says, I said, no way. And, I'll, and I, won't, I won't lie, I, I did say, not a chance. I'm not moving to Manchester. To be fair, I only moved to Man I only been to Manchester twice before. I actually spent more time in Newcastle than I had spent in Manchester. Um, but I kinda, it kind of warmed on me. And I ended up being number three to move up, um, up to Manchester. There is an advert, which is, I can never look at it, um, that was in The Guardian. Um, trying to encourage people to come up. So I, get, I basically became the, the pin-up boy for the move to Manchester. The interesting thing about it is that, um, obviously, we became Media City. Media City is actually based on a format. Um, the guy on the right, um, I forgot his name, Dr. Jurgoff, I think Jurgoff. Um, I can, I gotta, sorry, I've got your name wrong. Um, he had this format, and he actually created this thing called the, um, the Soul Digital city and so he basically took that same format and did the same in media city but it was all very much an experiment i think an experiment that worked really well so i'm going to talk a bit more about r and d in, in the north because that's what i really know very well 
we worked really hard to make it unique. We worked really hard to do things that we weren't going to do in London. So we were doing stuff that, because we were much closer to the rest of the BBC, and also we had an influx of people come in who informed what that lab was going to be like. And they were not hindered by, by kind of like existing um, norms from London. And I think that was really important. And I hope that that will happen in the Northeast Tech Hub. Um, obviously, you've probably heard about it. You know, 25 million pounds for production. Yeah, creative sector support from lots of people. Um, but I think also, I, I really am looking forward to seeing the influx of ideas and thoughts from this sector, not just from the people who move from London or wherever. I think that's the most important part. And obviously, we are uh, looking for people. So there are 70 digital jobs. Um, and I think that some of you may be able to get in there and actually inform, not just kind of be a worker, but actually inform what the BBC does in the future. But I want to talk a bit more about my project, which I'm really excited about. Um, so R&D has been very interested in this thing called adaptive media. It's very similar to what you just saw with interactive um, kind of storytelling. Um, but I've taken a different um, kind of uh, view on this, that rather than you choose your own adventure, it's very much, it happens based on things that are around you, where you are, what you're doing, who you're with, that kind of stuff. Um, actually, as a piece of my work um, in the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester right now, uh, this thing called the Perceptive Radio. The Perceptive Radio is really interesting because it, I didn't think it would have happened if it was in London. I honestly think that. Yeah, the people who came and made it are all... So I think um, so MCQN are Liverpool, uh, Mudlark were Sheffield. You know, I think that it wouldn't have happened, and I think that's really important. That sums up what we're trying to do in the Northeast hub and elsewhere in the country, like Cardiff, uh, other places, Glasgow. You know, there's a lot of other places that BBC is moving out to. So I do think that... Podcasting, I'm going to use podcasting as my example, has a lot more potential. Actually, how many people listen to podcasts? Oh, wow, that's quite a few people. If you haven't got your hand up, listen to some podcasts. <laughs> so for most of you, podcasting, this is how podcasting looks right now. It's kind of like you, it's an app. It's usually on like using one of these apps, um, we'll name them all. And you listen to a podcast, and it's just a piece of audio playing, OK? In the back in the day, we used to download music, so download podcasts to our iPods or MP3 players, and then, um, then we would then listen to it. Then we started to get phones that would be able to pull it down automatically, and then obviously now we're using these apps that can do that. But we want to reinvent podcasting, because we think that there's a lot more potential that hasn't been explored, and the market isn't exploring this. And the reason why is because this, we've got smartphones. Smartphones, okay? Your smartphone has a lot of data, sensors, and computational power. And all it's doing is just playing back audio. It just feels really wrong. You know, there's so much more that could be done. So what we've done is we've created an app, which is basically the, the radio that you saw before, and it will adapt and change things based on uh, time of day, day of the year, um, you know, are you walking for a certain location, those kind of things. I would love to talk to you all about it in more detail, but I, I just don't have the time. I'm running out of time already. We also created this uh, editor. So even if you don't you know, know how to code, and it's not that hard to code, uh, it's kind of this XML thing, if you've heard of it, um, you can actually just drag and drop and make stuff. And that's currently on, um, on a thing called BBC MakerBox. So you can sign up and you can try it right now. We have lots of demos. And the key thing about this is that if you have an Android phone, I know, I know all you iPhone users are going to hate me, but it's on Android only right now. There are, you can literally install, you know what, all you Apple users, you're always, we're always the last to get it, so that's, you know, this time it's Android's time. 
But there's a serious reason behind that, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, so you can, you can download it right now, and you can actually try some of the demos that we've got. Um, that is, you just look for literally adapted podcasting, and you'll find it. Okay? Um, I will also have a QR code later. So we are trying to build a community because this is unknown territory for us. It also is a thing that we know in the BBC. We'll do some things with news, some things with weather, some things with you know, um, sport. But actually, what we want is that there's so much more potential, we don't even know what to do. So rather than us try and do that, why don't we just give it to the community and see what they do? You know, because this is a new medium, and I honestly think it's a new medium. It isn't just, you know, like, um, just, you know, kind of a choose your own adventure storytelling type stuff. I think it's much bigger than that. I was talking to Sam actually about music and what kind of potential it could do. So you can have an album that changes every time you listen to it, or in a month's time, it's different. You know, those kind of things you could do. And I think that's really powerful. So we're building this community of practice. If you'd like to join us, on this, um, on this community, then please do, or get in touch and, um, and find out more. And the reason why this is important is because, you know, one of the things that we're doing is that we're trying to make the future of adaptive podcasting open to everyone. So we're gonna open source the whole everything, the code, the app, the editor, everything. Everything will be open sourced. And that's really important. And I actually think, so you might be going, oh, well, why would, why would the BBC do that? You know, what, what, what's the point in doing that? I believe that this is the future of public service. You know, I think this is, this is a model of what we should be doing always. You know, we should be creating stuff and then releasing it to everyone to do whatever they want with, to build businesses, to do whatever they like. And I, and I, I say this, you kind of go, oh, well, yeah, that's what Ian says, you know. But actually, I'm not going to go into the detail, but this is actually the Royal Charter. I pulled some of the bits out of it. You know, there's stuff about collaboration, making freely available, open standards. These are all the things that the BBC and all public entities should be doing. And this is one of the things that I think, you know, this example on this project is the kind of thing that we should be doing more of. Because it's always been about public service. You know, you know there are, there's lots of companies that would love to have the R&D departments that, that we have in the BBC. Well, we can be the R&D department for you. We can give you stuff that we've done. We're doing it to the public. You know, we're giving it to everybody, including young people as well, which is really important for us, which is why we chose to, to go Android rather than iPhone. Yeah, it's about empowering the next generations. I still remember you know, using the BBC Micro when I was at school. And I'm sure most of you are still, you know, kind of going, yes, actually, I remember that as well. You know, the Spectrum, the BBC Micro, you know, they all had a massive influence on, on the next generation. And I think that is what we need to be doing. If we're not doing that, we need to ask ourselves, what on earth are we doing? Thank you for listening. And if there's any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ask me a difficult question, Zed. <laughs> uh, don't worry. I, 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 know, I know certain questions are probably not uh, for, for public consumption. Ask any questions Ask you Ask anyway. Like. All right. You asked for it. Go on. So first off, uh, <laughs> are you satisfied with, I mean, obviously you've been, you've been literally living this journey of the BBC, you know, moving out to the regions and nations, if you will, right? Do you feel that is it is it exceeded your expectations? Is it met your expectations? Is it are you still disappointed? Do you feel Oh this? I did ask a really difficult one. Yeah. Okay. So I know it's a tough question, but just overall, give us a No, I know. think honestly, I do think it's a it's a I'm seeing pockets of change and I'm and those changes are growing and growing and growing. Yeah. So it starts with very small little changes here and there, but then like the way that we do meetings, the way that we the people that come to the meetings, the people that go in, you know, I just think that, especially with you know, the move and the amount of people, even just even going to a meeting and the different accents that you hear now, yeah. it's, I used to work for the World Service, it's yeah. kind of like that, where before it was very, 
is a very kind of yeah. London Southeast accent. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I had the I was I had the pleasure of once being invited to Radio Force. A like oh. strategy away day top. I was a guest speaker. I guess representing I'm digital. So, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, what I was shocked by was how it just seemed like I was in sort of like a Merchant Ivory film, uh, with like everyone seemed to be from an Oxbridge grad and like the low class people were maybe LSE or something like that, you know. And it was just really it was like I cannot believe how just. I don't know. I guess just it felt very privileged. Is perhaps what the word yeah. we might use today. And so you feel that that. That's actually changed for real. I can tell you for a fact. So in R&D, most of the people are doctors. They've done multiple PhDs. I've only done uh, a, you know, a Bachelor of Arts. Uh -huh. you know, I, I think if I'd gone through the process of just applying for R&D, yeah. I would never have got in. Right. And now I've been there for a long time. Okay. And I'm making major changes in R&D. Okay. So I guess importantly, you're seeing some genuine acceptance of this idea of BBC North and and that it's less and less of a big deal, and, yeah. and, and perhaps with less... Yeah, I think it's become just snobbery, the really. There was a lot of snobbery, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. One, one. Okay, yeah. Fine. So my, my next question was um, around um, this idea, you, you present this stuff about public service, and, and so, like, obviously, you know, the BBC is a public service broadcaster. That's literally, I guess, the title that's applied to it. I guess you seem to be talking about it being, like, a public service developer. Is that kind of what you're talking about? I, 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 I mean, not of all things, clearly, but like I, it would I, have I a... do think that everyone always thinks of the BBC as broadcast. And I do think that that is going to change. Mm -hmm. And I think developer or something else, I think we, we are moving into, well, we've already moved into the digital age. Now we need to you know, define, and this is part of my other project on the public service internet, but what is public service in the age of the internet? Yeah. You know, it isn't just broadcast. We can't just take what we really did and plonk it on the internet. That's what everyone else has already done. Yeah. And it doesn't work. And how much progress are you seeing that, that sort of, <laughs> only, only because it is a pretty radical, you know, re, I mean, you and I have talked before, I think the BBC, I think the BBC is more essential than it's ever been, but it's also more in need of a fundamental rethink about how it interacts with the world, I think. So I think, one of the things that, when, as soon as we moved up, as soon as we moved up and, um, and kind of started to recruit people, it became very clear that we did not want to just do what London did. And I think that ambition of, this is a different city, this is a different part of the country, we're gonna do something different, we're gonna be unique to ourselves, was one of the driving things, and I think I do really believe that this is what's going to happen and it will make the BBC or public service stronger overall. Okay, well, good luck with that mission, sir. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you very much. Cheers,